1969 Shelby Mustang 2-in-1, coming up next. Hello everybody and welcome back to another great Monster Hobbies unboxing kit. And today we are looking at the Ravel Monogram 1969 Shelby Mustang 2-in-1 kit. Now this kit unfortunately has a few missing parts in it as we'll see in the video, but it's also been out a lot of times on the market. So before we begin looking at this, let's take a look at some of those old classic boxes. The 1969 Shelby Mustang GT is considered by many to be one of the premier muscle cars of the era. Whether it was set up as a modern day street machine or street stock off the showroom floor, the Shelby was the hottest of the hot. And here of course we have our Ravel Monogram 1969 Shelby Mustang GT. And as you saw in the pictures before this of the box tops, the initial release was in 1998. This one is the 1998 version. And the current one is, of course, the 2013 Rebox that has a convertible version. And in many of these kits, they've redone the wheels and everything. So this one is a kit that I got second hand. And there are a few missing bits, I hate to say. But as we turn up the box, we can hear a big thud as all the parts fall inside. <laughs> At least it was one. Anyway, there's our details on this. The body is molded in white water slide decals. This has a big 428 Cobra Jet engine and Jimmy engine driver blower. Authentic decals including Shelby stripes in three colors, molded in white, transparent red, and clear with chrome plated parts and black vinyl tires. And over here we have all the paints that are called out for this. This one of course is from Ravel Monogram and it actually has Hallmark in here as well as Crayola I do believe. Anyway, coming back out with our camera. See the end of the box has all the little errors in here. Engine glued together, unpainted, missing custom parts. Can be built stock only, missing top of carburetor. So I've got my little issues with this kit. Of course, when you find one, hopefully you're not missing anything. Here we have skill level two, ages 10 and up, glue and paint is required. And this is our built-up model kit. Just zoom in here a bit. You can see that big high-rise manifold with the dual carburetors. And then the back of the Mustang, of course. This lid did rip off. It was re-taped, <laughs> as we'll see. Anyway, actually one cool feature on the bottom of the box is a bit of highway. So you could display your model car on the box. And then there's our end of the box looking very much like the top of the box. Now this box, of course, has my least favorite way of opening, which is the hinged top, which means that everything goes and falls out all over the place. I had to put the parts that were put together in a bag in case they shot out the sides of this terrible box. <laughs> I really hate that. Okay, we have our glass. We got our body and interior and undercarriage, which I popped all together in one piece just so I wouldn't lose it. There's our chrome. Yeah, so I wouldn't lose it! Anyway, <laughs> just joking there. Uh, some of our white pieces, and then parts trees, parts trees, parts trees. Thankfully, pretty much everything is here. This is one of the kits that, of course, I was supposed to sell in the store, but really you can't when... There's our decals. When there's missing bits, you know, people complain, right? So getting this out of the way, I will take the box away and we'll look at our white parts. But of course, before we get into the parts, we have to take a look at our instruction sheet. And there's one thing about these Shelby Mustangs is they were made by Carol Shelby, who of course was a race car driver and had his own shop after this in the later 60s. But according to what I've read, these were actually built in the Ford factory in 69 and 70, as opposed to being built in Carroll Shelby's shop. So 
it might have been because production was coming up, mass production was coming up in favor of these cars. What makes them distinct is, of course, the special fiberglass components that shall be put on these cars. Anyway, looking at our instruction sheet, this of course is a two-in-one, but according to what's not left in this kit anymore, it's really a one-in-one. -one. <laughs> That's why I'm not selling this one. I'll have to build it. Anyway, we'll take a look at our instructions. They fold out into these multi-page pieces. So let's just zoom in on the panels and carry on. Here we have our engine assembly, and of course we get the stock version and the custom version. Keep in mind that this is the big 428, the Cobra Jet bits, I believe. Anyway, we've got our intake manifold, our carburetor, which is two pieces, which I think I'm going to have to replace with one out of the parts box, since I'm missing part of it. Chrome valve covers. There's a breather on here, which is also chrome. Then we have our cylinder heads gluing onto this two-piece block with the transmission off the back. Then our oil pan and our oil filter distributor up there as well. We head over to the custom side. It says, note, chrome engine parts may be tinted with transparent green paint. That'd be interesting. We've got a chrome valve covers. Basically, this is the same engine block as the stock version, except you're, you are getting the dual carburetors and the velocity stacks on this high intake ram intake manifold, which is painted silver. And then our distributor pops on there. So two awesome looking motors. Now, following the arrows downward, of course, we have our stock engine being dropped into the chassis, which you're going to paint the chassis black, or they call out flat black here. Starters going on the side, your fans and alternators, water pump and engine, or sorry, <laughs> fan are all gluing on to the front of your engine. And of course, you get your exhaust manifolds going in there. Peeling over to the custom side, which, of course, is coming down from that engine build up top. Our starter, our exhaust manifolds, which are using the stock ones, which is interesting. And all the rest of the front end of the engine will all glue on here, and then this pops into our frame. Step two is our interior chassis assembly, and here we have our dashboard and steering wheel gluing on, and then our gear shift, and all this pops into an interior bucket, which is kind of sad. It would be nice to have more individual pieces. However, this is a very nice bucket in here. Then we're getting our bucket seats gluing together, tops and bottoms. And there's a little roll bar that pops in. So there we get our interior all together. Panels C and D show our two-piece radiator going together, which of course is our radiator and the radiator shroud. And all this glues into our front panel. And then we also get our radiator top and a little oil cooler which will glue on for the front of the car. Step three is our chassis and suspension assembly. So that basically is our body with the glass popping in. It's reminding you to remove all the little taillights and turn signal lights out of the center of the glass. Then we move over to step B. There's some front shocks that will glue inside your wheel wells. Then the interior pops in here and you paint the bottom of the interior flat black because all that is molded in. And then our chassis over here, let me just move this up a bit. There. Okay, you guys know that's D, right? <laughs> all right, so our chassis will pop into the completed body here. And then all our rear suspension components will pop in there. And you, all, you have a choice of putting in riser blocks as well underneath. Then uh, that's a custom version up top. So then our stock version down here, of course, it's showing just the rear axle going in without the risers, all popping into our rear end assembly, our chassis assembly here. Step four is our chassis engine compartment assembly. It says use parts number 86 for a raised axle on custom version. Our shock absorbers will come into the back here. And these ones, I do believe, are staggered. So you got one in the back, one in the front. Maybe not. Then we've got our radiator hose going on top of the engine and our brake cylinder going in here. And then step C is our custom version, which is basically the same thing. Radiator hose going into the radiator and the top of the engine. 
and then our master cylinder gluing in back behind. The only difference is the high-rise intake engine, which is displayed there. And then we have these stiffeners, which are going up on top of the shock towers and into the firewall. Uh, same with the custom version, just showing you the different engine. So body and wheel assembly, step five. You've got the custom or the stock version coming down this side and the custom on this side. So we'll do this together. So here it shows our air cleaner going on the top. And then we've got our front pan gluing up underneath. And they call out gloss yellow, which is interesting. That was the original. <laughs> the parking lights are going on. And then we've got these driving lights with little turn signal lenses in here, which are clear. And all this goes into the front. On the custom version, same thing, except we're not putting in that stock air cleaner. They're calling this out metallic green on your pan. So now let's just move this down. Actually, let's try to get B and C in here together. So we got our grill going into the front. There's a license plate, the separate headlights, and your decal. That's same for the stock version. Now there's a little divider bar that's being glued into the back here or something. So keep that in mind. And then down, oh, maybe that's the license plate. Yeah. Okay, and then down here we've got our wheels going on. So we've got our outer, or, or sorry, our inner wheel, our tire, and then the chrome hubcap going on, or the chrome wheel actually. And same for the stock, except you're using the stock, or the custom wheels. Oh my goodness. Step six up. shows our final body detail assembly. And Carol Shelby loved using the Mercury intermittent rear tail lamps in here. So again, of course, we get those. And then we get this exhaust port, which pops in the back here and looks nice. And some backup lamps that pop into those holes. Then the whole rear completed assembly will glue up into the body right there underneath that spoiler. And then what do we have in the spoiler? We got a nice little grill here that's chrome. So you can paint flat black in and then wipe the top off to get the chrome Shelby letters up. Pop that in the back and then our bumper mounts in those holes there. And we just move the panel down and here we got our two different versions. There's a custom up here and the stock down here. So we'll do stock first. Little scoops pop in along the sides of the bodies. These of course were Shelby specials. And then our chrome mirrors, our mirrors will go on here with a chrome mirror bit going popping inside and they glue on the body and then for our custom version well it's basically the same thing the air scoops are going in the side and the mirrors up there and a decal on the back the only difference of course is they're showing different engines in there finally we get into our final detail assembly and we got our stock hood going on here the little hood pins glue in and there's a hood lip that's chrome glues on the end and all this hooks in the front of the car there we've got our battery, and it's showing just how you paint it up. I do believe there's some decals in here as well. Then our air cleaner with the decal on there. So that's what they're showing. And then down below we have our GT500 stripes, which of course are lots of different variations in color. Then if we just slide our instruction sheet down, we've got the custom version. And essentially you're doing the same thing. There is a hole in the hood that you cut out for those velocity stacks to pop through, just like on the box top. And there you go. And that concludes our look at our 69 Shelby Mustang 2-in-1 instruction sheets. Now let's take a look at those white plastic parts. Now today I'm going to try out something a little bit different since I had this model in the box all popped together, just so you guys can see. Now here's our Mustang body, and this is really nicely done. You can see, of course, the interior is all in one piece, and then it's got the little bits for your hood and whatnot to uh, pop out in the front. The battery is molded in place. And I'm just turning this up. Hard to see, but there's a little Shelby Cobra logo up here. And then our door panels and everything are nice and crisp. See the little marker lights back there? Sorry, I know this is white plastic. It's hard to get white with any good detail. This is um, open in the back. That of course is for the Shelby insert and then this down here is for the rear of the car. You got a nice little fluted bit in here to hook on the front nose piece. Okay so 
now what I'm going to do is there's a chassis underneath and as you can see the front is all molded as one piece so there's not really too much you got to do there just bring the body apart a little bit a little bit there we go and the chassis is out now you notice what happened there just carry on with the body for a sec here but as you can see there's some pins down here to locate your windows there's a couple of mold marks, whoops, underneath in there. I always end up turning those to me. <laughs> uh, number 16 Hobby Blade, of course. Underneath, it's not bad. A couple little mold marks here and there. But overall, the body looks very nice. Okay, now getting back to the chassis. You can see it's got this funny little tongue sticking in here. There's our underneath of our interior, and like I was saying, the those are molded in so you just need to paint this all flat black and then once this gets in the tongue matches up under there for alignment purposes and all looks nice there's a Ravel 1988 mold mark on here which you can sand that off if you want authenticity very easy to do overall this chassis portion is very nicely done nice construction on it and then getting into our interior you got that nice detail underneath turning it over there's very good door panels on here even though the mold detail is light based on this being a tub the tuck and roll seats look good this would be a good kit for someone to start with because a lot of it can go really quickly and you got the right pedals molded in as well your clutch your brake and your gas so again very nicely done by Ravel so now I've got two parts trees sitting here side by side, but they're kind of all in the same ballpark as to what's on them. So here we've got our stock air cleaner, the shock absorbers, and our wheel backs for one of the versions. And we've got some more wheel backs sitting here for another one of the versions, as well as different shock absorbers. And there's the raising blocks. I guess so this would be your street rod one here. Then there's our stock steering wheel, which is a cool Mustang steering wheel. Then we've got our rear differential with the springs molded in place, as well as our drive shaft. There's the back tail panel. This, I believe, is part of the exhaust pipe setup. Master cylinder. Uh, there's our high rise intake manifold for the street machine. So now let's just take a look at these up close see the nice detail across the back panel not much mold marks on the back side of course there are some on our shock absorbers pardon me <laughs> and then over here just take a look at that nice air cleaner looks like the proper factory piece and there's our stock wheel backs let's just turn this over and there's custom wheel backs as well a little more deeper dish I believe so anyway, there's our first of the white parts trees. Now here's our next pair of white parts trees. Now in here would have been the interior tub, but of course that got removed by somebody. So instead I've got our little sport mirrors and that little radiator thing. There's our front clip right there, the scoops. There's, looks like more shocks. Oh, uh, probably the front ones. There's our exhaust system with the sharing pipe in there. That's the top of the radiator thing. And then here we've got our bucket seats with the seat backs. And let's just move this out of the way. And I'll bring up these to the camera. You can see the nice detail in them. There's the top of that radiator and front of the car. So again, you can see that it's quite nice detail and that this is one of those great kits that will go together really well. Finally, we have that really cool fiberglass Carol Shelby Mustang type of hood. <laughs> and then our support brackets in here. There's a little roll bar, a little miniature radiator, as well as the fan belt. Oh, so that previous thing was the full radiator. Sorry, this is the cooler type radiator. And then underneath, nice detail under the hood with the matting. There are some mold marks that need to be removed, but they seem to be easily accessible. And then there's that indentation for cutting out your hood for the your velocity stacks and over on this side everything looks pretty decent not really any mold marks to consider 
So there we go. Now you may be wondering what happened to our engine. Well, here it is. This has been partially built. So I'm just going to lay it out as to what's still remaining to be put on here. So of course here we have our 428 cubic inch engine with the, the manifold for the single carburetor. Our uh, water pump is put on there, as are the cylinder heads. The engine block has been glued, to get, glued together and the oil pan is underneath. And there's our transmission in the back. The exhaust manifolds are here and here. This little tube goes to the bottom of your air cleaner. There's the carburetor missing the bottom, which is sad because it does have the little fuel uh, filter in there. There's our belts and pulleys, our distributor, our fan, oil filter, and starter motor right there. And then I've got our dashboard here, which is also a loose piece in, in my kit anyway. So just bring the block up, I guess that's good enough. Oops, you can see all the nice detail, the frost plugs and everything. This is really done well. The linkage is all there. Everything is as it should be. So again, a very nicely done engine by Ravel. Pardon me, turning into William Shep. So just move this out of the way. There's our instrument panel. You can see the nice gauge detail in here. There is wood grain on there. So easy to paint again, and a very decent model to go basically from, I guess your snap together kits, sort of as a next step after that. So again, really nicely done, and everything goes together really well. Now we get into my favorite part of all the model kits, which of course is the chrome tree. This chrome tree looks very much like all it has in it is the stock components. So I think I'm missing the chrome tree that had those cool looking mag wheels on there for the race version. But since I'm missing parts and I can only build it stock, this is good enough for me. <laughs> Here's the Magnum 500 style wheels, which are on there. And then our grill, which is nice that it's open in the top so you can paint your flat black wash into there. The grill for the back that says Shelby. Rear bumper and the front hood thing. Uh, trim detail. And then of course our tailpipes. There's our uh, valve covers, alternator, and turn signal lights and everything else is cool. Let's just go and look at this grill. There you can see how nice that is. Now they're very much like the Javelin style grill. Wide open with the headlights on either end. That, of course, American Motors. But anyway, there's our Cobra emblem in there as well. You can see the nice detail on the Shelby lettering. All very cool. Looks nice, looks like how it should. So again, very good work from Ravel Monogram. And here we have our clear components. And like was shown in the instruction sheet, the turn signal lights and the headlights are molded inside here. So you're going to have to carefully cut those out and go around it with the file. Um, you got the little bridge runners going into the back window here. And then here's our Mercury style tail lamps at the back. So again, very cool. The mercury lights are divided. If we uh, just move this up, you can see the little di <laughs> divisions in there. And uh, again, we've got the waffle pattern on our headlights. So make sure when you put these in, they're supposed to go north and south and not at a 45 degree angle. Now where the rubber hits the road, we have these Goodyear GT radials. These tires came out after the polyglass GTs somewhere in the mid 70s and they were used on quite a lot of cars back in the day they do have raised letters so you can paint them or you can actually turn them over and leave them blank on this side which would probably be more appropriate for our mustang considering it's a 69 and would have used the polyglass gt tires these tires of course are very solid and have a good tread pattern on them and uh, they're pretty easy to clean up because of their solidness and they do look nice under the car. And last but not least, we have the decal sheet. And this one's really cool because they give you a choice of three colors of stripes. So you can do a, a light colored car or a dark colored car or somewhere in between. I do believe these gold stripes are on a lot of red cars. So, or burgundy even. So keep that in mind. 
We have Illinois license plate, it says 1969, so this is sort of like a museum style license plate. And then we've got one that's specific to the car again, California GT500. You can't put this on anything else but <laughs> a Shelby GT500. Anyway, there's the stock air cleaner decal. And we do have on this side custom decals of big flames. And then there's some other decals here that go on different parts underneath the hood. So again, very nice set of decals and nice choices on the stripes and the flames. And here we have our Shelby Mustang. I built this one back in the 1980s, late 80s actually, to match a car in a video game called Test Drive 2, The Duel. And then after I built this kit, I discovered that the car in the video game was actually a 1968 Mustang. 1968 Shelby. So I kind of got this wrong, but I did my own um, stripes on there and my own license plate. And then I used the Krager Mag wheels from, I think it was a 57 Chevy. Something to that effect. It's been so long. We're talking like 1989. But anyway, it still looks pretty decent. The uh, white paint and blue stripes are pretty soft and a lot of dust got stuck in them. The interior door panels, I've got them red with the black insert. Ah, not too bad for an early attempt. But anyway, this of course is my car. There's a dual across the back. So if any of you guys ever built cars out of video games, if so, let me know. And uh, there she is. And that brings us to a conclusion of our Ravel Monogram 1969 Shelby Mustang 2-in-1. And if you've built this kit in the past, please share your photos on our Facebook page. Well, we hope you enjoyed this great look at our Ravel Monogram 1969 Ford Shelby Mustang 2-in-1 kit. And if you love this channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. And don't forget to check out our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. You'll love seeing it. And until next time, everyone, happy model building.